Let's now make this application a little prettier by using some CSS and also by adding a Google font. The first thing, if we open up the sidebar and go into our project, let's create the styles.css. And then link this in the head of our index.html. I've already chosen a font from Google Fonts, but you can choose any different one which you prefer. This is the one I'm going to use, which is on the home page, but you can choose or search for a different value up at the top. So to include this, just like the earlier project, let's click on this, and then we can select any of the font weights. I'm going to go for the 300, the 500, and a bold 700 version. Embed. And then let's copy this link, which we can place in our index page, just above our style sheet, and then our font family to place in our styles.css. We can add this in the root under the HTML element, paste this in, and we can also select a root font size. I'm going to go for 10 pixels, and then also set a background color. This is going to be for the section behind our content. So if we stretch the browser on the final version, this is the color which we see outside of the body section. The value I'm going to use is 2D 3740. Let's check this is working and our style sheet has linked correctly. Reload this and we see the background color, we see a different font, and also the font size has taken effect. The reason we see all of this background rather than just on the outsides is because we haven't yet set a color for our body section. Let's do this now. First of all, some padding, which is going to give this some spacing around our edges of one rem, which is 10 pixels. Then a background for this section. The value I'm going to use is 1C, 262 and F. The font's a little hard to read with this dark background, so we can also change the font color. We can again use a hex value just like we've used above, or we can also use a RGB color to select any of our values. An RGB color is a way to combine red, green, and blue values to make a particular color. I'm going to go for a red value of 230, 225 for the green, and 225 for the blue. This is going to give us this light white color, which will take effect for all of our body section. To find out more about these particular color values, we can do a search for HTML color picker. There is various color pickers which you can see online. All of the default one which comes with the search engine. We can see for any shade which we select, we have a red, green, and blue value, and also the equivalent hex value which we've looked at just above, along with some different values here too. So this is just a couple of different ways you can use to select color values. Next, back over in the body section, the width of 90%, just to restrict the overall width of the project. And also center this with margin zero auto. Remember, if we didn't have this auto value, this will be pushed over. Let's just check this. This will be pushed over on the left of the project. But now with the auto value on the left and right, this is now divided up equally on both sides. After the body, let's go for the logo section, which is at the very top. We can center this with text align center. The current fill color for our image at the top doesn't currently stand out too well on this darker background. So just like we see in the final version, we can also change it too. We can also target this in the CSS. Or we can do this over in our index.html. The way to do this inside of our SVG element is to take a look at the path section. Each one of these sections has a fill attribute which we can change. I want to change this to be a value of gray. Refresh. Now the head section is gray. And we can also do the same for the body section. Back over to our style sheet, we're going to now move down to the form section, which is going to be the wrapper for our label, the form input, and also the submit button. All we need to do for this wrapper is to set the text line into the center. 
we need to make the label a little larger. So let's target this. The font size, I'm going to go for 1.8 rems, which is equivalent of 18 pixels. Down to the number input. So first, target all of the form inputs. Then inside the square brackets, we can select our particular type of number. Adding a type of number is not particularly important for this project since we don't have multiple inputs. But this way we are covered for if a project was to grow at a later stage. So by default, the form input won't inherit the rest of the font family. We can see this is a completely different font than the rest of the project. So font family, we can set this to be inherit. This will now inherit the font style from the rest of the project. The background, to keep things consistent, let's also grab the same RGB color, which we used for the lighter text. The width of 80%. Some spacing on the top and bottom, so one rem, and then a value of zero on the left and right. To make the actual form input larger too, we can add some padding inside. So 0 0.8 rems, 0 0.8 rems on the top and bottom, and then 0 on the left and right. Remove the default border with border none. A font size to make this a little larger when you use the input to value. Let's go for 1.2 rems. And also set the text align to be centered. Moving down, the next thing we have is this form submit button. To make this just like the finished version, we're going to add a background color. We're going to add a 50% border radius to make this fully rounded, along with setting the width and height. So let's target our button element. Again, we also need to inherit the font family. The font size a little larger, and also the font weight is going to be bolder too. So to make this a rounded button, we're also going to set a width and also an equal height. I'm going to go for 80 pixels and also a matching value for the height too. Let's see how this is looking inside the browser. So this is equal width and height, but we also need to round the corners with the border radius and also remove any default borders. So let's start with border none and then the border radius, which is a value of 50%. To give this the blue color we've seen in the final version, we need to set the background color. I want to go for a hex value, which is equal to 0A, D9FF, followed by some margin values. So on the very top, 0 0.5 rems on the top, 0 on the right, 1 rem on the bottom, and then 0 on the left. Moving down to our last seven days values, this is inside of an unordered list. Remove the default padding with the value of zero. And we also need to remove the list item bullets. And then we can set this to go across the page by setting the display type to be flex. Remove the bullets with the list style to be none. Leaving us with the dashes which we have for each list item. Taking a look at the finished version, we also have some equal spacing between each one of these items. And we can do this by setting it justify content to have space between. Good, so this unordered list is a step in the right direction for styling this section. The next thing we need to do is to target each one of our list items. Starting with the border, so each one of these items stands out more. Let's go for a value of one pixel, a solid line. And then some padding inside of these list items to add some spacing. One rem on the top and bottom and 1.5 on the left and right. Still within this section, let's target the level three heading, increase the font size, and also add some padding to give us some spacing, just like on the final version. To do this over in the index.html, we have a section with the class of entries wrapper. So let's target this. So we can work with our level three heading 
and also add some spacing to our sections. This is a class, so we need the dot. First of all, we can add some padding to give this some spacing on the top and bottom of one rem. Zero on the left and right. And then also set the default font size to be 1.6 rems. Next up, the level 3 heading, which is for the title of last 7 days. We can remove any default margin which the browser provides. And you can see this removes the default margin from the very top of our heading. We can push this into the center with text align. This is also pretty bold, so let's change the font weight a bit lighter. Below this, we have all of the rest of the information for our app. We have the total, the distances, and also the weekly high. This is all wrapped in a section with the class of data. Moving down, let's target this. First of all, we can set the default font size to be a little larger, so 1.4 rems. Each one of our sections is surrounded inside of a div2, so we can target dot data and then div. So let's begin with the background color for each one of our sections. The value I'm going to use is going to be 141, C22. The display type is going to be equal to flex. So we can make use of the flex box to center our label and also the value on the same line, along with also adding some space in between. We first place these onto the own line with a line item center. And now to add the spacing in between, we can use justify content. This now pushes all of our values over to the right. The next thing to do is to add some padding so these are not up against the left and right edges and also some margin to the outside of our div so all three sections have some space in between. First of all the margin on the top and bottom I'm going to use 0 0.5 rems, 0 on the left and right and then some padding inside of our divs. We already have some spacing on the top and bottom, so let's just add some spacing on the left and right. So zero, and then one rem. So this is now the majority of the styling for our application. We just need to target the section at the bottom later on when we add the progress circle. But for now though, let's move on to the next video and add some JavaScript to our project so we can update our entries.